this will this will be for posterity so be sure to tell me exactly how it feels <laughs> okay so for our game of uh, the first game of super atomic we've got dorse angelus cots dicey Hello. and i'm going to be deeming the game so i am the host <clears throat> technically it's my server so i am the host They have a bunch of uh, pre-generated characters using our first alpha playtest um, spreadsheet. And we've managed to make a radioactive nightmare, a uh, insectoid type dude who can freak people out and turn into a ghost, and Spongebob. Uh <laughs> <laughs> was not expecting Spongebob. Uh, was not expecting a super spongebob yeah yeah but like i imagine that is like chance. half the time i mean that is to a certain extent half the charm of this game that this is the sort of thing which is possible baron zemo and spongebob showing up in the same game mm -hmm. on accident <laughs> so the uh the reason why you've all gathered together in the metropolis uh the city as you call it um otherwise known as big city on the uh, south coast of, the, of America. So it's hot and sweaty and a big sprawling place with a big river going through it. Think uh, oh, pre right. Predator, predator it, 2. Yeah. But it sounds like Alabama. <laughs> it's like if Alabama and LA had a baby with um, uh, New, York, New York on steroids. Oh, so <laughs> Houston. Gotcha. So <laughs> it's... Humid, warm temperature. Mm hmm. Okay, good thing it's just like not hot and dry, but just warm and humid. So I guess it's currently um... 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the city. Mm. So it's hot. Yes. And, and with a roughly 95% humidity. Mm -hmm. like... <laughs> the place is a powder keg. What? We've like got a nice blend. Like... Yeah, well, no, just everybody's just, you know, frizz, frizzled hair and on edge and with uh, light sort of floral uh, um, clothing, Caribbean clothing, um, a lot of South American influence, um, including a lot of South American drug trade. And of course, oh, butting so up against the Mexican blood, blood um, cartels. Oh, so it's Tampa. Oh, my bad, Tampa. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, the local political events um, partaking in the background is America is starting to annex uh, Mexico. All Ooh. part of my, all part of my, my, my grandparents' plan. Yeah, this is, this is after the re-election of Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, God. This is a fucking dystopian future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, the interesting thing that you guys have been summoned to, to the Metropolis Center um, by the uh, some local authorities, some FBI based, and some, some feds have shown up. And uh, they have summoned, this is one of the hot spots of hero activity, and you guys are just basically the, the metas that they have pegged as being in the area. Um, and they have summoned you for, with um, basically a government contract. Presumably Which means... they're about to offer, presumably they're going to have, like, I will insist on immunity from all past and future crime i'll insist on immunity from prosecution for all past and present crimes yeah <laughs> yeah 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 my guy is definitely not any kind of hero like well, well, I mean, that's so not a good... those of you who have acquired radioactive materials for your for your suits and stuff they they are aware of your activities but because you, you're relatively new um, you haven't been in the city for very long, so your crimes haven't really impacted locally. So you might have done something like out of state or whatever. Oh, you knew about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. We will allow amnesty for the... Like, like, we're willing to overlook that small army of robots we know you have in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you're met in a, um, a underground uh, car park um, above, uh, below a large building, kind of like an FBI, FBI building. Um, and you're met by Elon Musk and, um, and Mr. Smith looking secret, secret security dude. And also Joe Biden of all people. 
Bureaucracy. Mr. Musk. Oh, I'm starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's got some of the device in his hand it looks like a about cell phone sized and he's just like i'm i'm, I'm really not comfortable with this level of radiation oh uh, sorry i assure you my former president so long as i yeah, keep my coat on you are quite safe uh, i gotta inform you that i'm not actually joe biden i just wear this so it's easy to get around Oh, uh, grandpa, grandpa. At which point his head sort of my... like, and a little drawer opens up on the side, and a little insectoid alien just waves his hand at you. <laughs> should we? Uh, should we introduce our to AI? To each other, or... uh, the secret security uh, agent. Uh, the, as the drawer goes back inside again because he can't survive in like earth's atmosphere and stuff <laughs> um he says uh let me introduce you to a representative of the race of aliens known as the gargantua seems kind of ironically named yeah <laughs> uh it turns out that Surprising. our international space Surprising. station has been invaded by uh enemies of the gargantua um and it is the staging ground probably for some very nasty activities they're building some sort of device up there uh, which is designed to knock out all of Earth's communications before an invasion. Hmm. Elon has been uh, kind enough to donate a rocket for us. Oh, and handy. we're kind of hoping that uh, if we just present you with a blank check, you'll go up there and sort it out. How blank Rest is this check? Within the operational budget of the US military. Hmm. As... If I may offer a counter proposal, I wish only for the acquisition of this satellite as payment. It's the International Space Station, sir. <laughs> yeah, you can't take this one like you did Poland. <laughs> Currently, we're telling people that the uh, the astronauts are doing spacewalk activities. They are in space. They're not walking. <laughs> he means they're dead yeah we would prefer that the satellite uh, the, the uh, space station not lose its orbit and plunge into the earth but if it comes down to it we are willing to lose the international space station wouldn't be a problem if you use superior Soviet engineering well, the engineering was yeah. It's largely based on Soviet designs. Luckily, you've got some. Luckily, you've got some details. With, luckily, is you have someone with exceptional technical knowledge. You have. Except they the use. <laughs> which is the hint of smugness in his voice. I'm, Except I'm just, they I'm just use kind the of... superior biro up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm just kind of picturing this this little gathering. We have like this Nazi death guy. <laughs> we have we have my character who's who's a communist, um, like icon of the Soviet Union, <laughs> and and we're we're getting a job from Elon Musk and an alien masquerading as Joe Biden, the former Soviet was... Union. Yeah. Yes. And SpongeBob. Don't forget, Buff SpongeBob is with us. <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, post in the chat. chat. I... <laughs> My uh, image. Did... <laughs> okay. Do you... Did you come up with a name for your uh, for your character, Cuts? Yes, I think at least the <laughs> alias name will be uh, SpongeWord. <laughs> SpongeWord. <laughs> SpongeWord. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we like? Yeah, should everyone describe their characters? Because I, I don't know what you guys are at the moment. So, Necrotron quite literally looks like... I mean, if he weren't wearing his suit, he would just look like a normal Caucasian male, about 5'7", with, okay. you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, because, of course, he was genetically modified to look to be the perfect <clears throat> example of his, his grandfather's ideals. Right. <laughs> but... With the suit on, it's basically a brown work coverall 
Okay. That like if you were to, that you if you were to like knock on it, it would feel very much like it's got. You would tell immediately that there's like small metal plate lining most of it. All right. And on it, <clears throat> you can't see his face because he's wearing basically the whole headed mask. Um, reminiscent of Red Hood from the Batman of, you know, Batman fame. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the sample you put up. It's, yeah. Do I see, does your character have a name? Um, I'm, I'm going, going to go to generate, generate a government, government name. <laughs> 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 uh, Aw. Yeah, his, his, his name is Kurt, is Hans Wagner, or Hans Wagner, as he calls him, as he would pronounce it. Okay. I mean, Ghost is a pretty good name for your character. I think, he, I think Necrotron is what he call, is what he prefers to call himself. All right, so I'll know you as Necrotron. Um, I am uh, the Red Rhino. Mm-hmm. And that's her in voice text chat there, or in the Superatomic tab, whatever you prefer. Um, and yeah, that's. I mean, you've got a visual there. What she looks like: ruby red hair, blue eyes, um, just like absolutely drop dead gorgeous woman. And she's just, like, from below the chin, she's just wearing nothing but, like, Soviet Red Army surplus steel. <laughs> Looks like a Transformer with a Barbie doll head on. Yeah. It's like, I'm not entirely sure that she's not a robot with a human head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's just, like, like this this suit of uh, of armor that's just made of, like, all these various parts. Like, you can identify, like, hey, that kind of looks like it's it's from a tank. That looks like it might be from a truck. You know, that sort of thing. And you just see, like, all these vehicle parts all over her from the neck down. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm still perplexed by the fact that I'm standing next to a, to a maybe Nazi as as the icon of the former Soviet Union and we're taking a job from, from Joe Biden. <laughs> For the record, Hans would be quick to assure anyone who makes the mistake that he is not a Nazi and does not share any of their ideals. <laughs> Whatever you say, Necrotron. <laughs> yeah, they will believe you. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yeah, you definitely have nothing to do with your parents, or grandparents, and yeah. any of that nonsense. <laughs> so transportation arrives in the form of uh, another unmarked van um, and uh, is ready to take you to the launch spot. Okay. Forgive my imprudence. Uh Front line, um, but how much of your body is organic? Uh, it's all organic underneath. Bungeword would have had a question. Sure. But I think it's kind of important uh, given his it. circumstances. Could he fit in there? Oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah. With um, yeah, he could with... squish himself into a small. Yeah, he could like squ squish himself He's smaller. Yes, but Just he has bought... Yes, but he has the muscle mass and such of a gorilla. <laughs> you got the dimensions of a gorilla, but uh, yeah. yeah, you can you can turn yourself into a sponge and compress yourself. Yep. You could literally dehydrate like, like those rhinos that you put in water. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what I mean, you'll, you'll probably get this all planning, of it. Get... Just to you get a wet spot on the seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things my character will wonder that would be so hilarious if you like this gorilla sized dude and he give you they give you like a human sized spacesuit and you go okay and you just like you turn into a, a spongy <laughs> material and you just squeeze yourself yeah. in there it would be quite hilarious to see this like big dude literally squeeze himself into a human sized suit with a no apparent like yeah. difficulty yeah like a yeah. fucking clown like a person yeah. like a fucking clown car yeah, it's just like, going what? from like this eight eight foot Giga Chad gorilla guy, and he just goes like they just show him like, oh, your ride's here. It's just like a regular sized car. He goes, oh, just... <laughs> like when you see a fluffy <laughs> Pomeranian walk between some prison bars, and it just seems to like move through the bars because yeah. it's just all fluff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, also, given the heat, he would probably be carrying around a precise uh, ball yeah. of like <laughs> vitamin <laughs> water. Moisturize me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it looks something, I imagine it would look something like this. Like it just zips it up and it like he shrinks down. <laughs> like some smelly fish water filled filled with protozoa that you feed on. 
In the chat for Game Room 1, I put in how I imagine Sponge, Please, our Spongebob you... would look when he puts the suit on. Yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I can fit this. What the? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> mm. um, they sort out the contracts um, uh, electronically, um, just basically with, you know, where you're going, going to have the money delivered and things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask my AI assistant to, who's presumably like in my earpiece or whatever yes sir to just what can i do for you uh, if you could make sure you get a copy of all of, of any software that they happen that happens to come within range we might just in case we need it for later am i aware of uh, to understand that you want me to hack the depart u.s department of defense um, I mean, I'm more than willing to, sir. So I want. I just want to clarify for the record. <laughs> if you can, if it can be done discreetly, do not. Oh, roll a d twenty. Roll a d twenty. Like, if it can be done discreetly, we don't want to risk getting caught. <laughs> All right, give me one sec. I'll roll the d twenty. Oh, right, uh, as well as you be carrying a case with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause, like if we can have a copy of some of their like operating systems, this would be invaluable for future endeavors. All right, where is the fucking? Oh, it's in non-gaming. R one D twenty. Oh fuck. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Where did that dice roll go? It's in bot chat. I rolled a five. A five. Oh no. On a d20, yeah, that's a basic fail. Mm -hmm. Well, a basic fail means um, it's not disastrous. So you basically just Jarvis is, is locked up for the until basically launch, trying to get this done. He fails, but he's not detected. Mm. Cool. You just so hear in the background got it. working, working, Daisy, Daisy. <laughs> Like a like a little um, spinning progress bar, you know, the side of your yeah. vision. Little Google Chrome icon. Spinning. Elevator music in my elevator music in my <laughs> ears. See a little like spinning, spinning like a loading bar up in my up in the corner of my vision. <laughs> All right, so you arrive at the launch site and uh, get into suits and strap it. They give her basic instructions on how to navigate and stuff in zero gravity, which is basically don't push off against something with more force than you can stop yourself. Mm. And uh, they I'm have a pilot with them, with you um, who turns around and looks at you all with like wide eyes and shakes his head. His name is Yuri. <laughs> oh, Yuri. Hans is... Hans is how did you come to work for the Americans, Yuri? I say with an intimidating <laughs> stare. I'm actually Australian. I presume this, I presume <laughs> this suit is properly radiation shielded. I'm an Australian. I'm a, on liaison from uh, the AUKUS agreement with Australia. <laughs> For the safety of my co-workers, is I presume this suit is properly radiation shielded. Um, it's. I'm not sure about internal shielding. Um. So you're, yeah, I'd keep a close yeah, eye on your gauges, mate. Just for, keep, just for safety measures, I'm just going to keep his coveralls on when he gets into the spacesuit. Uh, that was really all I was checking on, whether or not he, whether or not it would be necessary to keep the suit on. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, can, can, uh... Alfred Fletcher get one that fits his anatomy. Oh <laughs> sure. yeah, sure. I'm giving him very <laughs> insectoid <praying> anatomy. Mantis. <laughs> Is that your character's name, Alfred Fletcher? Yes, uh, that's his government name, but he likes that to go is... by the Reaper because he's invisible and he used to cut oh. grass. <laughs> that is okay. <laughs> a rather benign government name and a benign job description, but a very intimidating. For some reason, your character looks like Cal <laughs> Urban. <laughs> Um, I guess now would be a good time to ask, just so it's established. Um, I have, uh, kind of like Angelus's character, <laughs> a lesser power 
that says I'm surrounded by a field of energy that damages anything it touches within 10 feet. Now, I flavored that as something she could turn on or off. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, okay, so so it can be, okay. I just wanted to make sure, since we're all apparently cooped up in this rocket. Yeah. Lucky. Okay. Hans is literally hazardous to anybody within <laughs> within range of himself. Yeah. As long as, as long as I can turn that off, then I'm good. It's easy to tell when it's on because it makes an ominous hum. Yes. <laughs> All right. Beep. 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 You are, if you are effect overly affected by gravity, you are pressed to the back of your seat and experience a nightmarish experience of hurtling through the Earth's atmosphere at a tremendous amount of speed. <laughs> uh, Alfred being Soon waterboarded, these... by, waterboarded by his own vomit. Um, <laughs> yes. Not lovely. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Here he's like, ready for separation. There's a jolt and uh, the reusable launch rocket separates and you hurtle um, above the highest reaches of the atmosphere into space. Ooh. Hey guys, what is, what's we're in space. <laughs> Hans is going uh... to talk to his AI. Ask, Hans is going to ask his AI to make a copy of itself so that he, so that, well, You'll see later, but he's going to ask his AI to just make a, a copy of itself that can be uploaded. To what? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, uh, obviously, the, I mean, the space station, of course, but like, this is, you know, yes, on the down low. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think we're in international waters, which uh, means that that intelligence you just created is not a citizen of any nation on Earth. Mm. Um, you, you should feel guilty for that. It's a cruel thing to do to a child. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, abandon him in space. <laughs> yes, abandon him in space. He's only five. He's only five. Two hours old. How dare you? And already an illegal immigrant. A three-hour tour. Good thing I voted for Trump. <laughs> Everybody did. <laughs> <laughs> and people call me a monster. <laughs> so, uh, you come within sensor range of the International Space Station and the uh, adjustments of the um, trajectory of the vehicle are handled by Yuri, who's very carefully monitoring all the controls and stuff, and he occasionally asks you to hit a button or something that's out of his reach. Okay. But otherwise, it's just a passenger trip, really. So... I'm going to ask Hans. Yuri what our, what's our ETA. Uh, it's about, f I would say, 15 minutes, mate. Have you got any other preparations to make? Mm. We have approached, well, we're, we're doing this blind, so I'm going to try and lock on to the space station and uh, without informing them. So the first they should know about it is when they hear a thump. I see. At which point you Hans need to good. move us. So... Huh? Hans just, is just, very remind his AI to make sure that he stays connected to that copy of himself. We don't want to be we want to make sure that we can actually get in touch with that other Jarvis that we're going to put on the space station. So, what kind of uh, opposition are we expecting here? Uh, unknown. They shut off the cameras. We're also not aware of environmental, so you may need to. They may have vented the atmosphere for all we know. Mm. In that case, I'm going to summon a Heinz helicopter cockpit as a helmet and pressurize my <laughs> my suit. Right. This yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a rush job. This one, guys. I'm I'm afraid to say I don't have a lot of information for you. I do know that there's no visible damage to the outside of the space station, and all the hatches are closed. Mm. Also, the uh, the EVA. The EVA suits for the uh, astronauts, of course, are all missing. Not a good sign. The EVA? Extra vehicle activity. Uh, how, space do we, suits. how do we get inside without letting all the air out? Uh, we're going to be venting the atmosphere from uh, the inside of the craft when we dock. Oh no, that sounds if bad. If we need to open the door, 
it should not take me longer. It should not take me long to get us inside if we have to force entry. Yeah, we'll know um, as soon as we latch on. We'll know whether the the pressure is the same on either side. That's a that's a uh, not an electronic control. So, okay. real quick, if we could just re uh, from my own recollection, what exactly are we? What exactly is wrong with the space station? It's been invaded by aliens. Oh, okay. In that case, Hans is going to make sure that his freeze ray is like primed and charged and ready to go. Wait, what? Aliens? And he'll turn invisible inside of his suit. I don't <laughs> think it affects his suit. Yeah, that's no, right. Like, in <laughs> fact, <laughs> he turns into that gaseous guy from uh, Hellboy. Uh, ghostly form becoming intangible. Does intangible mean mm -hmm. I, I, I move through things? Yes. Yes. Do I still need to breathe? Move through you. Because mm, that's uh, scary. In space. I wouldn't go intangible and move through a toxic atmosphere. <laughs> uh, it's I essentially think... just like when you come back to, it'll like saturate your body. I think when I turn I... intangible, my suit falls off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! And you can quickly turn back and quickly try. Unless and it specially yeah. made anything you're recording, you my machine. suit just deflates. <laughs> well, then I think Cots had a question. True. Sure. I would assume, unless it's specially made, or your power functions, that anything you're in physical ta contact with, like clothing and such, uh, also changes. <laughs> your... It's up to you. I mean, the reason I uh, depicted him as uh, as a nude mutant <laughs> was for that, <laughs> concern, for that reason, but I will defer to the GM. I'll be told what's happening. Do we have any <laughs> intelligence on the opposition, other than they are extraterrestrial in nature? We have been told they are aliens, but do well, we know um, more about their biology, their habits? Alien just means alien. foreign. Yeah, I know, which is why he started they off saying They could just be Spanish. He said alien second. <laughs> Did the Gargantua send, send us up here without any intelligence? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't given Yuri any intelligence on the aliens whatsoever. Hmm. I mean, Jarvis. We were landed. Presumably Jarvis. I'm going to ask Jarvis if he managed to find out anything about the aliens that we weren't told when he got into their systems. Like, did you happen to find anything out about these aliens that they didn't tell us? Who, me? Yeah, I'm asking the AI. I'm asking. Oh, Jarvis. Jarvis. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I've been too busy uh, trying to hack the U.S. military. All right. It's... What What was your search no. parameter? Sorry, I can have a look. Did you happen to while you were in there? Did you happen to find anything about the aliens that they did not tell us? Oh, I wasn't in there, sir. <sighs> Useless machine. Well be, That's prepared to... <laughs> well, be prepared to analyze biological samples shortly. Yeah, bull. Yeah, Hans totally intends to see if he can, like, collect blood and tissue samples of these aliens, because of course he is. <laughs> okay. Well, you've docked, so um, now it's time to open the hatch and go inside. He says that there are... Uh, Yuri says, oh, good news, inside his suit. There is atmosphere in there. Okay. Marvelous. Wunderbar. Well, I'll keep the helmet on just to be safe. Same. Last thing you need is to that's... blast you all with radiation, because like I suspect the no atmosphere might actually in like extend the range of that death radio death aura if there's no it atmosphere. It probably would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, good thing. Uh yeah, you've got atmosphere on the other side there, so uh you can just open the hatch. Hmm. Cool. Uh, Sponge word would comment. Uh, at least I'm not adding. Uh, uh, the atmosphere to places I've been. I'm going to place my ear against the hatch and see if I can detect anything through it. Okay, uh, give me a d20 roll. Let's see. 
20. If there is space, is down... oh, that's a my two. My character would do the same. Hans is just standing by in case he needs to basically unlock the doors through. Basically, in case he needs to literally hack the doors open. Yeah, well, I, I rolled a two, so that's a painful blunder. Ooh, okay. So, um, yeah, you're pressing your ear to the door. Um, there's a mistake of communication, and somebody opens the door while you're listening, and um, you get painfully caught in an edge as the door is swinging open. So basically get um, a horse bite on your side from a, a large metal hatch. Ooh. You see. It is literally a painful blunder. <laughs> uh, what type of injury would that be? It puts a tear in his suit. Uh oh. Hmm. Well, I mean, my suit is made of, like, Red Army vehicle parts. Hmm. And I. I don't know. Well, let's say it's uh, it 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 does uh, it does a bit of damage to like a limb or something, so it's it's like stiff or something like that. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll say my my left arm. Yeah. Gets gets crimped in the door, and uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's a little worse for wear. Oh no! Check your uh, spacesuit. Is there a leak? Yeah. Are you leaking from anywhere? Uh, I know. Suit looks like it's in okay shape. I can always mm -hmm. summon more parts for it, but now my arm inside got got a bit mangled. Oh no. Um, I I I I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so while you're having this conversation, the door is open. Hans oh. has got his freeze rays. Like identify just identify yourself. Uh, there is a um, the lights are on. Uh, the the chamber that you're uh, entering is a cluttered space. If you've ever seen the inside of the International Space Station, there's basically straps and baggage all around. Um, when you go into the inside, there's uh, two passages which which branch off from this, and there is a um, it continues on to a hatch which is open, um, which is dark beyond that. And there is a figure that is furtively looking up from behind um, a table uh, ah, and looking at you. It's um, it's green and grasshopper looking, but humanoid. Ah, green Spaniard. I'm guessing that, I'm guessing if we, I'm guessing if Is we it... talk, we can be heard through some kind of speaker in our suit, right? Yeah. Well, no. Um, but you're. Otherwise, be much... shouting "identify yourself" would be kind of a moot point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's brandishing a very obvious hand. It very much looks for, like an obvious ray gun. The fact that he's brandishing it and pointing should probably be some indication that, like, yes, he's, yeah, very muffled. Oh, did it! I did the very justice! Try using the universal language of interpretive dance. <laughs> So the uh, the uh, grasshopper looking individual raises his antenna and they go whoop, 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 and they glow slightly and all of you here in your minds peace friends I mean you no harm do you understand me yes remarkable I think, I think I guess we're thinking back at him then yeah, I guess so I yes yes. I understand you. This is amazing. The AI integrates perfectly with your synapses. Jarvis? You, did, you, have, you have what in my synapses? Yes, sir. Guys, I have a concerning new imaginary friend. It's all... Fear not. It is the alien speaking to us. Jarvis, could you... Oh. Make a, could you perhaps make a copy of this? This could be quite useful in the future. Alfred's going to start speaking in his mind. Like, like, is this mm -hmm. like a computer program that can let you talk mind to mind? That would be fucking baller. Like, please get that, get us the, get us some of that, Jarvis. Okay, who wishes to respond to the alien? Um, Alfred's going to keep his mouth shut and just think in his brain. Hello, friend. 
Good to meet you. Are you Spanish? Gosh, you are very loud. I don't know what Spanish <laughs> is. Does that mean friend? Um, it means alien. Yes, I am alien. Like not from America. That big planet. Out what there. is America? The big planet. Oh, I see. That's America. That place that you left from? Mostly America. Most of it's America. <laughs> are you all Americans? Yes. No. Technically. Uh, technically. Well, uh, I'm American. He's illegal. She is illegal. Hold on. Hmm. Uh, Th that translates as criminal. Uh, we are not criminal. Hans is very suddenly, very abruptly. I am. Uh, excuse me. I am not a criminal. I am not a criminal. There has never been any charges or convictions. <laughs> oh no, I mean you're an illegal alien. The uh, grasshopper man stands up from behind the table. He's roughly humanoid. He's got four legs, two arms. Uh, the arms look praying mantis-like, um, but not lethal. Um, he does have a number of devices strapped around his torso. They seem to be like magnetically attached to his uh, skin-tight exoskeletal suit. Um, and he's got advanced technology on him. Uh, he stands, he's very frail looking. He looks like um, his species either spends a lot of time in low gravity or he's from a low gravity world. So he's, he's not tall, but he's thin. Um, Hans is going to ask what he's, is going to ask him what he's going to just ask. What are you doing on this space station? We are trying to communicate with you, but all communications have been blocked. Now we need your help to um, create a weapon. A weapon, you say? Yes, to turn, <laughs> to turn like this was almost too excited Sorry. to turn this orbital device you have here into a some sort of defense against what is coming. What is I... coming? What's coming? Wait, hold on. Did I did did Elon Musk pack my car? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Earth, sorry, don't worry about uh, it. Elon Musk is another friend. He's an American. I see. Actually, he's South African, but the Reaper doesn't know that. <laughs> Turning the International Space Station into an orbital laser is like one of Hans's fondest dreams. Like, as far as he's concerned, it's basically this is Christmas for him. <laughs> so, wait. So, what is, is coming? This... <laughs> I can show you. Please come with me. Gladly. I will Hans follow is gonna cautiously. Once more, make sure Jarvis has got that second, got that copy ready, ready, got that tethered copy ready to go. Uh, the Look, alien walks the... Uh, along the surface of the thing because you're in zero gravity, by the way. So the he's walking along the surface of the um, the wall, basically grabbing hold of the pouches and straps and things with his hooked um, insect legs. And he's moving crab-like, so he moves sideways with his arms in the air, with his arms tucked in close to his torso. And he uh, moves into the dark area of the car, um, beyond the entry. While they're moving, Hans is going to, is going to, you know, make polite conversation to the effect of, "What is your suit made of? It is quite, adv it seems quite advanced. I am very much interested in technological apparatuses." Just pulling up a map of the International Space Station, just a second. Yeah. Villainous intentions aside, Hans would actually be very keen to talk shop with the alien about his the tech of his exostukes. Like that's like that's his technology and this is jam. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we are So you've docked at uh, on the left side? And we're moving forward yeah so there's two compartments on either side and you're moving forward from that first compartment into the one where you two see the two figures in blue and red there that that yeah. is a central compartment and it's uh dark where where is this being posted sorry in uh game room one uh guys uh, i don't see the blue and red dudes from the map <laughs> uh they're missing <laughs> It's not happening for your character. Yeah. 
What's up? <laughs> So the uh, the big strut above this compartment is uh, swarming with um, uh, well activity, extraterrestrial activity, presumably. Yeah. What that? Uh, that you can't see it because there's no windows. Solar panels. <laughs> um, no, that you're at the other end. So the big um, the big strut thingy with the crane arm. Oh yeah, that's the part I meant because it's got solar panels. Oh, oh no, yeah. sorry, it's electrical power coming from solar panels, and it's solar panels are elsewhere. I see. I misread. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's where we are. Um, so he uh, directs you to an orb, which is floating in the middle of the compartment. It, um, it's smooth, textured, looks like obsidian, and it lights up like an LED uh, display when he puts his hand on it. Um, and he moves around, and it gives you a... looks like a 3D image because you're looking into the orb. Um, of the space station and he shows a, a ray being made from looks like an organic material that spreads out like a big sail around the um the international space station and then there's some sort of interaction with the earth's magnetic field which it then directs into a um a hyper blast of energy genius okay, so it is so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask a genius her. i'm gonna ask our friend you still haven't explained what exactly this weapon is supposed to be used for. Defending your world? From the Gargantua. It is creating a shield? No, it is creating a weapon that will punch into their vehicle which is approaching your solar system. Wait. Did you say the Gargantua? Then why is it... Then why is the beam pointed yes. at Earth? Sorry? What? It's not. I thought you just described that it's interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. With yeah, a it's beam. like drawing power from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a whole different problem. Dear me. <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Zat is drawing power directly from our planet's magnetic field. That correct. Would be, that would be most dangerous to everything living on Earth. We don't think so. Uh... Our scientists have reason to believe otherwise. They are carbon-based life forms like us. There shouldn't be a problem. Their atmosphere is stable. Yes, but this this solar radiation, as he points to in the general direction of the sun, like there is much radiation from our star that would be quite lethal to the carbon-based life on our planet. There is no way that this device could de deploy the entire energy field around the Earth. It is a tiny portion of power. I see. So, so what do the Gargantua want with Earth? They are conquerors and slavers. They Multiple. despise all larger life forms. Well, I mean, one of them was Multiple. inside Joe Biden, so I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Um, yeah, guys, um, should we tell this guy that we, um, we, we were hired by one of these guys? I think you just spilled the beans. Uh, oh. Oh, that is very unfortunate. They are on the planet already? At least one of them is, yes. It seems he wants you know to stop you. Uh, he's gonna think an image of the Joe Biden guy, only he's going to try and think of him with the head of the Gargantua, so like, Joe Biden but with his face pulled off to reveal his actual alienness. Okay. Um, so that yeah, doesn't work. Like Shit. Can't transmit images, um, I guess. Yeah, no Wi-Fi. Um, Joe, Joe Biden, Biden lives in the White, White House. I think. Uh, has Joe Biden done a term in his timeline? Um, yeah, it's currently the term of Donald Trump. Oh, okay. A second term of Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deviates, which means either in the future after current Biden, or it was instead of Biden. <laughs> Neither of which works. Um, in that case, Hunter Basically, Trump a wins the upcoming election. Upcoming election. Okay, and then so he's going to give a brief description of. So then, in a very brief explanation, the country we are, the country on Earth we are from, the United States of America, is led by a man that we call the you president. You are from the man that 
most of us are from <laughs> is led by a man we call a president. The most the president before our current one was a man named Joe Biden, a very old man, who it seems was a gargantua in disguise, either all along or very recently. That makes so much sense. I mean, mm, in retrospect, a bit. So <laughs> much. Like quite a lot. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden, and then he's going to pause and then say, in the retrospect, that would explain many things. <laughs> the, uh, the robotic arm on the strut that uh, they're constructing the super weapon with uh, unveils as he starts using yeah, the controls. You guys realize what he's going to do, right? What? It points towards the earth. Wait, that laser's pointing towards the earth? Fuck no, 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 no. That laser's pointing the wrong way. I don't understand. Our enemy is on the earth. Can that laser target one specific human on the planet? Yes, along with many others. <laughs> Hans is going to be unsure. Like I know you can't centering the face, centering like... the effect of the the beam will be precise. <laughs> red, Man, you red, don't know red, how red. badly Hans is like. Hans is practically salivating during all of this because it's just like his dreams are coming. Are, it's like this alien is uh, is just casually about to do the sorts of things that he could have only dreamed of. Like as it, it, a as space much... laser. Ah! <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Uh, he steps back from the controls and looks at Necrotron and says, What is a death ray? <laughs> Never you mind. Um, I have much experience in these advanced technical matters. I could assist you in fine-tuning your targeting system to find this particular human. I am energized After by the extreme excitement you seem to have for this technology. I can explain its operation to you. Marvelous. Though I uh, would need a closer look to have a better understanding of its opera operations. I, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I learn better from demonstrations. But yeah, Hans is very much like he's slowly inching towards this like control orb. And let me demonstrate the full destructive power of this fully operational uh, energy <laughs> game. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds bad. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> Nine 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 nine. Please don't. <laughs> can you can you isolate this effect purely to the United States? Oh yes, he it did is. say he could target it, one yes. human at a time. Just the United States. Yes. Okay. To just that. one human. He presses a button. <laughs> the space station oh, goes. Jarvis, 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 are you getting this? <laughs> Sorry, sir, well, I, lost, is... I lost you for a moment there as the electromagnetic wave hit me. <laughs> um, I did needed this do death ray. Red Rhino I mean, is completely actually... okay with this as long as it's just hitting me. There has... I'm starting to receive reports from Earth. Ignore, the report. Ignore those reports. I want you on this ship because we. I, need... I want you in this death ray. I, I want you in this laser. We need this laser. Would be all of our dreams come true if we ha if we could control it. So like, yeah. Hans well, unless to there are other door, <laughs> unless there are other gargantua on the planet, we have eliminated the threat. You're welcome. Um, you said they were coming. It would be prudent if this laser could be could remain in its, own, for its original intended purpose, since it is entirely likely that this Joe Biden imposter might have brought others of his kind to the planet, or even allow others to come. The, the threat is not entirely gone. I, they I'm, could that still laser, be coming. That laser projector is just a mobile uh, local defense a emitter. The main emitter is still being constructed on the other side of the space station. Surely you see the from the of... Japanese logistics module. I'm going to uh, to elbow 
Necro a little bit and just kind of whisper into the radio. Be like, you realize that if you keep talking, he's going to blow up more of the Earth, right? I'm trying to make it so that we can decide. Who... Wait, he blew up some of the no Earth? Air quotes. Oh, he sure did. Yeah. Well, he didn't blow up the oh, Earth. No. He blew up one person on the Earth. Oh, no, he didn't. No, we, we isolated it oh, no. to the United States. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Half yeah, of the city is now a smoldering ruin. Half of the city? <laughs> he, oh, absolutely, yeah. he, abs he absolutely hit the target, yeah, in a one mile radius, centered directly on Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my god. The only thing left is a smoldering yeah. pair of aviator sunglasses. Hello. Session one. Within 45 minutes, we have basically fired a space laser and vaporized the whole US. Well done, team. <laughs> Sponge word would say it. Uh, we should probably avoid using the uh, device on our own planet unless they've actually landed four forces down there. I agree. Although it was only one kiloton worth of energy, it was quite effective, but I do not recommend lancing that much energy through your atmosphere too often. Agreed. Which is why we appreciate your aid. As far as Red Rhino is concerned, the U.S. getting lasered off the face of the Earth is, is a pretty good deal. I mean, Hans isn't exactly going to lose any sleep over it, but like, ah, man, that's where a lot of my stuff, that's where a lot of his stuff is. So he's like a little bit bummed. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's your fault. It's all right. He's trying very hard to get control of the space laser out of alien hands. So like, if nothing else, it will be... I mean, under his control, but ostensibly our, air quotes, our control. <laughs> Wait, if we kill Joe Biden, who's paying us? We. No one and no one anymore. <laughs> We're freelancers. We're not, we didn't like, do anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah, it was his fault. He points at the alien. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You mean like uh... Nintendo We? No, like, we didn't do shit. <laughs> but yeah, Hans is very much trying to negotiate with this alien for like, let us, let us humans, glancing at the other extraterrestrial on the ship, let us Earthlings, if this laser is to defend uh, ourselves, perhaps we could commandeer <laughs> this laser so that if the Gargantua do come in force, we can direct that beam at the incoming forces, which you guys have so very generously set up for us. Whisper to Jarvis, I have like, please tell me you're some, please tell me you are working on getting, on getting me access to this laser. Uh, Doors? You uh, spot out of the corner of your eye a sneaking figure of uh, uh, Yuri who's come on board and is now pointing a pistol at the alien and about to let off a shot. What do you do? Uh, I am going to use my lesser power to manipulate shadows. Uh, and I'm going to summon the specter of communism to apprehend Yuri. <laughs> That sounds fucking terrifying and effective. Uh, yeah, that works. <laughs> I don't even like, have to roll oh, for fuck. it. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Wait, what? <laughs> the spectrum? Yes, my, I, I have uh, two lesser powers, and one of them is to manipulate shadows to create objects and barriers or make yourself look like something else. And I've just put in brackets the specter of communism. It's the pitch black figure of uh, Vladimir Putin appears, <laughs> wrestles the gun from his hand. Now that'd be Lenin. Oh, Lenin. Yeah. <laughs> and nice. him with a hammer and sickle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just flashes the hammer across his eyes, <laughs> drops his gun. <laughs> Explain yourself, Yuri. That green-eyed bastard just blew up the Earth! No, he did not. He, he blew up America. <laughs> it's very important distinction to me. 
<laughs> he's uh he's cowering on the ground holding his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all fucked. Not... <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Who are you, are you sent here as to to uh to do this if we didn't complete our mission or what? <laughs> I just saw a fucking death ray fly out of this thing and hit the earth. What the you know, fuck? Marvelous wasn't Why don't you stop marvelous, him? Marvelous wasn't. Because he said he could isolate it to just America, and I thought that was okay. What do you mean, say he something? I thought we were assassinating. Sorry, yeah. I thought we were assassinating Joe Biden. What? Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought we were just targeting one guy. He told us he could target just one guy and. You're working people. with him? No, he didn't. <laughs> I don't know where you got no, that. I asked, I asked him if he could isolate it to the United States, and he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Okay, do you, it." That was after, that was about two or three minutes after I asked if he could isolate it to one person, and he said, "Yes," and multiple people. Yeah, as in like you did that um... just to take out somebody that was already surrounded by our own fucking security forces. Are you insane? <laughs> Listen, we oh, could have taken care of it ourselves. We don't need to blow up a fucking city. Do you calm mean our team was soldier. in that radius as calm well? Yourself. Calm yourself, Zodak. <laughs> that Joe Biden was an alien imposter bent on world domination. We did us a favor. Now calm yourself or you will be immobilized. He very, like, deliberately points his freeze ray at him. Oh no! Elon Musk was there too! That's right, Elon fuck Musk fuck has you. been vaporized. <laughs> no! And nothing of value was lost. <laughs> he was such a good American. Yuri uh, stands up and, well, he stands, he floats up and holds his hands out and uh, he's unarmed and he starts drifting back towards the porthole from the motion of standing up right. Cool. I'm going to zap him anyway, just to make sure that he can't try anything. <laughs> he's out. All right. V Wunderbar. Well, is he on what now? I think I think we're international criminals. Is he on bad <laughs> team Biden right. as well? No, just another day for just another day for Hans. <laughs> He's already. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hans would would complain about to being in a room full of psychopaths. I'm really struggling to keep track of who the good guys and the bad guys are here. Well. So am I, says guy. the alien. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when two thirds, when like two thirds of the team are like actual fucking villains. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I, I'm I'm the basically the Captain America of the former Soviet Union. So if, if an alien tells me that he's gonna hit Joe Biden with a fucking space laser and take out you know a good chunk of America with it, that's just like oh okay. Yeah, yeah Darren Gima over here is, is also is likewise un is likewise unconcerned because you know it's only some stuff he's got yeah. he's, he's collateral really damage. Got yeah. yeah, collateral I mean, damage. That's one less government agency on his back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, all he wants now is control of the space. All he all fucking all Necrotron wants is control of the space laser. Uh, well. I guess we have to decide what to do next because uh, we're international criminals on Earth, and I'm sure that they're going to send some kind of retaliation now that this has been proven to be a, a literal space laser. I I wouldn't be surprised um, if if there's nuclear strikes incoming. There's a uh, an alert beep beep from the the sphere, and the alien leaps up and uh, immediately starts um, reprogramming the the space laser. Allow me to help you, Jarvis. Be ready. We've detected some objects being fired at the space station from Earth. Uh, those would be a um, hostile attack. We presume so. It <laughs> the Can you just target burst into... only <laughs> those projectiles and nothing else with this laser? The Reaper breaks into it's the risky. Panic uh, It should be possible. We'll have to do it lancing. Uh, we'll have to wait until they're quite close. They may affect us with a proximity burst if they are nuclear warheads. I would offer my own artificial intelligence system to aid in the guidance of this. Time is critical. To... Please make a decision. Oh, 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 I brought uh, a nuke. Can you, uh, I would like to download my AI program to the sphere, ostensibly yeah. to make it 
to aid with the processing and targeting. Okay, if if you have a nuke, um, I'm, I, okay, I'm gonna have to roll for this because I didn't uh, determine this when I was making the character. Um, <laughs> AJ, what 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 would I roll if I was trying to determine if my power to summon red army vehicle parts uh, extends to the Soviet space program? Uh, give me a uh, a d20 roll. A d20. <laughs> Wait, can I roll? I would like to also roll a d20 to see if I can just download Jarvis to the sphere. Uh, never ask the host whether you can roll dice. Wait, no, I left my. I would like to download car. Jarvis to the. I would like to download Jarvis to the sphere. Jarvis informs you. I have got an interesting invite. Uh, I'm not sure where it's coming from, sir. Shall I accept? Uh, tell me about this invite, for, and then I'll tell you whether or not to accept. Well, it looks like a vast yawning portal with digits flying into it, like a tunnel going into nowhere. Uh oh, um, I rolled a seven, by the way. Oh it's shit! A basic fail. Yeah, it's a basic fail. Too far. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask mm -hmm. the alien very quickly. Do you? Uh, are you attempting? Do, as if he is the one. If he is sending any particular. If he is attempting to connect to my. Uh, yeah, Artificial that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Cool. Accept. Accept and upload the copy to the... Jarvis Accept, disappears your copy. from your consciousness. Oh, uh, Dorse, um, you uh, become aware, because you were extending your power um, as far as you could, you become aware that there are Soviet machine parts in the International Space, Science, Space Station. Oh, this is true. That means you can summon them over the local area. However, be damn careful where those parts are attached. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Since I've had Jarvis make a backup copy, I'm gonna turn up, turn on the copy so that I'm not fully without my robot butler. Huh. Okay. It looks like, like the majority of the Russian parts are on the back end. Mm hmm So I could probably use those parts without destroying the whole station. Uh Okay, here here's my suggestion. Uh, you brought the pocket nuke, yes? Mm-hmm. Then what if I use parts from the space station uh, to augment my suit for space flight capability to deliver the nuke so that we can try to intercept the incoming nukes and take them out in the shockwave at I... a safe distance from the station? I left my nuke in my car. I'm, I left my car parked in the, the car park that we met Joe Biden in. I don't know oh, no, if Elon no. loaded my car onto the spaceship or not. Uh-oh. I don't think... Mm. I mean, Elon's launched cars into space. <laughs> it's, it's true. Quite literally. Would you like to spend five gear points to make sure that your nuke is with you in space? <laughs> That's such a fuck. I'm not. I'm, that is a sentence. That yeah. is my last five gear points. I just had a nuke and a car. <laughs> can I, for those five gear points, can I have my whole car and my nuke? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I wish I could have my car delivered by Space Amazon. <laughs> can I scramble back to the shuttle we arrived on and get my car? <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, you can. I'll just let it out the hangar. <laughs> uh, Jar Jarvis one, Jarvis one gets back in touch with uh, Necrotron and says, "Hello, sir. I've been significantly uh, upgraded. The time is literally what the energy of the magnetic sphere. Uh, it's not a laser I... per se, sir. Wait, can I if it's calibrated to be like the magnetic sphere, can you draw the energy from the force field to power our laser?" that we will then fire at the ship. We'd need to be a lot closer, but yes. Uh, can I uh, can I return to the station? Sure. The list? Okay. <laughs> Jarvis 1, can you move the International Space Station closer to mm. the approaching battleship? Oh, Dorse, you do notice that um, a lot of the, the insectoids that were working on the array are dead when it fired. Now, oh. do they look like they got cooked or did they just yep. die of old age they got they got cooked oh shit okay meanwhile i'm trying to drive the space station closer to the alien battleship to be within the can't. range of 
the difficulty yeah. there is because uh, Dawes has removed the um, the Soviet oh, parts ah. from the rear module, the engine is no longer working. Uh, can I, can... I communicate with Dawes? Can um, Dawes? We need Red Rhino. Those yes. Red Rhino. Uh, yes. Can your I assume, I assume need... we have a radio. Yeah. Okay. Red Rhino. Uh, we need to be closer. Red Rhino, I need you to trust yeah. me for a moment. I can fire the laser. I think I can use that force field against it. It's the ship itself. But we need to be closer to the battleship. Can you push us within... Uh, I need you to push us closer to the enemy ship. Yep. I'm... Like now you see why he said trust me for a minute here. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I'll I'll if, try to um, get myself into a good position to rocket blast the station towards the ship. Okay. Give me a D twenty roll. So I'm gonna do... Please Should work, I... please work. Praying to R in Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is a sixteen. <laughs> nice. Sponge, Sponge word would I think try observing the uh, uh, giant space station ship. See mm -hmm. if he can spot anything like entrances or weak points to the best of his ability. Okay. Because if we can if we can't blow it up safely we can maybe It looks see... to you like the force field is not um, active around the burning hole that um, was punched into the space station by the um, electro beam from the Earth. So they may have erected Wait. the force field not just for defense, but also to to stop their atmosphere and stuff from venting out of the vehicle. If all the more reason to drain away that force field to power our own laser even more. Also, because there's a drift, you can see the gas from the atmosphere condensed in space and it's moving away from the ship, that the force field seems to be directional. Um, where does the force field seem to be coming from? Unsure, but it seems to be projecting in a field pointing towards the space station. So they're specific... Yeah. So they have it specifically pointed at us to block us presumably you can't see the force field of course but you can see the venting atmosphere in the hole mm -hmm. okay um sponge word was just maybe if the uh it seems to me that they are trying to use the force field to plug up the hole we made in their ship so perhaps Good. If we're about we don't sorry go ahead so Perhaps we can, if we have enough drainage capability, we could possibly just drain the first field and just vent all their atmosphere. True, but we don't know if they can from parts of the ship. No, whatever True. your plan that is. That would result in the death of everybody on board. There are possibly millions of gargantua living there. Good. What, suddenly this guy cares about it? Yeah, it's like, I failed to see the problem here. They're literally not every, to not every individual on board that ship would be responsible for the decision to attack the Earth. Hmm. They are complicit. They are, they are nonetheless complicit in that action by virtue I mean, of being on the ship, which has come with intent. Do we I, have a blueprint of the ship? I have a suggestion for you. Uh, Jarvis has confirmed that this would work. We can detach the Russian module, which has already been damaged, uh, put it in front of the electro ray, and fire it to propel the unit towards the Gargantua ship. Because there is no onboard propulsion on the shuttle uh, pod, there would be no way for you to slow down or stop unless you impact directly in the hole that we have left in the Gargantua ship. But it is possible. So, so, are you suggesting we board it? I think what he's suggesting is that we use the Russian module as a ginormous bullet cannonball projectile. There is one problem, though. The Gargantua are tiny. 
Their corridors and passages inside the ship are so small that you would not be able to fit in any of them. Well, if we're taking away their atmosphere and hurling a push and hurling the rush of that module at them, that would probably do enough damage to cause, well, catastrophic damage. Mm -hmm. So no need to fire the laser. We can take away their force field and by extension their atmosphere, then push the Russian module at them like a kinetic projectile. Uh, do we know the location of their command uh, of the ship is typically located? Typically towards the center. Uh, does anywhere look particularly... I know it's a vague question, but does anywhere on that ship that we can see look particularly important by virtue yes. of being different the large smoking ruined more. hole <laughs> cool it's... target the point that's already been weakened is yeah. there any chance i could make some kind of roll to attempt to extend my intangibility to some objects around me for example if i had my car still would it be possible for me to make some kind of check to see if i could but as a how much <laughs> Um, yeah, we could call that your Hail Mary move for the game. Oh, God. Um, exactly how small are the uh, gargantua and... They are two like... inches tall. Small enough to fit in that is... Biden's head. Yep. That is, uh, what a misleading no... name for their species. <laughs> but look at the size <laughs> of their vehicle. That is and, true. Uh... <laughs> They are all about compensation, man. They are literally the embodiment of small man syndrome. I well, they're about to be. We, we have a mission is to destroy all life forms larger than us. So, I, I mean, suspect, I cannot compress myself that small. So no, our no. laser can't hurt it from the outside. We could We're punch not, another hole, possibly. You see, I mean, plutonium is not particularly dangerous from the changed... outside. <laughs> If the objective has changed from firing a laser at the ship using their atmosphere as a battery to throw the module at them using the their atmosphere as a battery, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. So what's it going to be? Laser or kinetic projectile? Well, I think if we load on this space station, I, I've never quite done it before. But I think if we load the laser onto the kinetic module, we might I might be able to extend my intangibility. <laughs> no, he doesn't know all this. He's like, I could maybe try and get something past that shield. I think. Sure. Uh, if, I may, if I if I may submit my vote, I think firing the laser would be a, a plan, if for no other reason than to assure the people back on Earth that, that laser is not just a tool of their destruction. We could, like, remember, if we're, we might want to not be international criminals, if we fire the laser away from us, we could tell them whatever we want to tell them about the true purpose of this laser that we've got in our hands here. Oh. Uh, by the way, how deep is the hole we already made in the ship? Uh, unknown. So, Hans votes firing the laser at the ship. How much Whether closer have we moved else? to the ship? How, how wide is the hole? Maybe I could fire the laser from within the ship. I mean, I'm, you I'm realize say you will be. Sorry, go ahead. I'm just gonna say, you know, I'll say it again. Whatever you guys are are coming up with, you better do it soon, because I'm literally like rocket blasting this whole space station towards the enemy ship. I um. I kind of left my spacesuit in the car. It's all right. That's right. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Um, Existence hurts anyway. 
there must be a spare in there. <laughs> These you can hear some uh, classical music. I think it's uh, Beethoven, possibly, or Tchaikovsky. As the space station starts to slowly soar through the uh, the, the the space, the space towards <laughs> the battle station. Jarvis, I appreciate the theme. I appreciate the atmospheric <laughs> symphony. <laughs> it's an homage to 2001, sir. I thought you'd appreciate it. You know me so well. Maybe I won't decommission you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. All right. Um, Red Rhino. Oh, sorry, yep. Jarvis. Are we within range? Sorry, Red, Red Rhino. Stand by. Jarvis one. Are we within range yet? Yes, sir. Cool. Red Rhino, uh, stop mm -hmm. pushing us forward. Um, try and keep us, if you can. Bring us to a, if, Red Rhino, if you can, bring us to a halt. Um, Jarvis, a begin little... draining the begin draining the force field in the same manner that the laser previously dra uh, took the magnetic field from Earth. If if you and, want me to stop, I'm gonna have to burn like all the fuel left in these boosters. Mm -hmm. It's fine. We'll come get you. I promise. I mean that that just leaves us floating dead in space. So are we sure? Uh, shit. I mean we don't really have much of a choice because the alternative is to slam the International Space Station into the into the battleship, which is bad Someone. for everybody. <laughs> Some of you may die. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Mm -hmm. All of us will die! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I could just let go now and then you go boost back to Earth, but I mean, if you guys got this. <laughs> I would like it if we could, like, I would prefer this not turn into a suicide mission. Uh, Alright, I'll, I'll, um, try to stop the, the station using, you know, hopefully without using all the fuel, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I'd prefer this not to be a suicide mission, he said, taking a nuke to the International Space Station. Uh, give, me, <laughs> give me a moment. I need to uh, quickly do something. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll listen in, but I'm going to be uh, right. muted. Um, I mean, so, right, so yeah, Jarvis I'll, basically I'll, I'll do my best. Training that I... I don't think I can make it back, so um, this is already a uh, one-way trip for me. For... Is there room for Alfred ground King? control to <laughs> ground control to Red Rhino? <laughs> yeah, um, I'll, is there I'll room try for to. Alfred in my in my spacesuit? Since if he's intangible, presumably he doesn't need to breathe all that much. Well, so can I like I have him temporarily my intangible? But I can't. Yeah. I can't really do will much. <laughs> ask if we, the objective is to destroy the entire space station. Or are we wanting to be more precise than that? Well, the module is heading towards the... Um, the Russian module is headed towards the the battle sphere. The, the space station is okay, as far as I know. Cool, so... Well, like, battle sphere. The battle... Yeah. The, no, your, the international base space station that you guys are on board is, is fine. The Russian module has been detached and is powering towards the, um, the sphere oh, no, with I'm... Dicey on board. No, I'm supposed right. to be using those mm -hmm. parts to push the the whole space station. Oh, the whole okay, okay. So the whole yeah, space station. Was pushing the, yeah, yeah. The whole space station was being pushed so that it would be within range of the yeah. Death Star. In that case, uh, switch from Tchaikovsky to the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm basically yeah, like, use... like Superman lifting. Yeah, the there we go. Thing towards it. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> so yeah, as soon as we're within range of the space of the battle of the Death Star, as I'm going to keep calling it because I don't have a better name for it, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're going to basically be, so yeah, we're going to, so yeah, whatever we did to use the Earth's magnet magnetosphere as a battery, we're going to do the same thing to their shield, only we're going to crank it up to 11 to drain as much as we can to fire that laser as hard as we can at the Death Star. Uh yeah. Awesome. Sponge, Who wants to roll? Would actually ask: Is it possible that we just drill into it instead of just one massive blast? That might make things a bit easier to drill into it. How? I don't know. I mean, we asked them if they could isolate the the laser to one person, and they said, "Yeah, well, sort of." And then it just took out like a whole city. So I don't know. No, you said you said, and I quote. <laughs> 
can we target one person? <laughs> and he said, yes, you can. It's targeted directly on one person. The voices in our heads True. is correct. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so uh, the objective <laughs> is to power towards the space station, hopefully slow down and tunnel tunnel into it. Um, worst no. case scenario. What's, I mean, okay. Well, I would hope like, that would be a change for me. That would be a, that might be a new plan, but like a space station, that would still be very bad for us. Because you're uh, firing a big energy beam would be the same as kind of like firing a thruster because it's drawing off their energy. So you're you're basically sure. pushing off, you know, you're you're ejecting energy, huge amounts of energy. So it would slow you down. Yeah, I might not even need to burn up less to this fuel for that. Mm. Mm. Actually, also the secondary uh, reason for using the laser is to prove to the people on Earth that the laser is is not just a tool for their destruction. This is a P this has PR implications as well. <laughs> it's like you keep calling it a laser. I don't think that word means what you think it means. It's a it's a it's a magnetic does, field projector. Does uh, the Death. weapon do we have to blast all the energy at once, or could we drill into the station, the bottle station? Due to the hasty nature of the construction of the uh, the array, uh, it is set for full power. I mean, we have also lost our workforce uh, with the first shot. It's all right. Mm -hmm. We're so. I mean, it's still one hell of a powerful blast. It should do the job quite nicely. Many grasshoppians died for that operation. <laughs> Is that their official name? Grasshoppians. <laughs> That's how it translates. Ugh. Well, so, luckily, luckily he can't see the uh, the visual image of what a grasshopper is because it's like you're calling me a monkey. <laughs> okay, roll. Well, better, uh, who's going to roll for this? Uh, I think it was Cot's plan to uh, tunnel in. So Cot's roll a d4. Oh, I, unless you're away from keyboard. I am on my phone, so I can use my app. What? What sort of tunneling are uh, we talking about here? Like, four. is he driving the lunar module? into the ship to board it did you roll a four cots yep critical success you mm -hmm. bored a hole into the ship through the shield and the international space station now floats into the smoldering ruin of the crater that you've left in the side of the uh the new crater that you've left venting atmosphere and tiny gargantuans fly past mm. cool now we're on a collision course with the death star does does it look like there's anything that would accommodate, it, if not the entire space station, at least maybe, you know, people of our size? Yeah, the other side of the space station is you bore straight through the middle of it and come out the other oh. side. Oh, we went all the way through. You sure did. Oh, holy shit. Okay. Yeah, don't fuck with the D4s. Hey, uh, uh, you rolled a one, you all would have died. Are you, are you able, able to, to turn this thing around? around? Good question. <laughs> Now that the uh, now that the spaceship, the alien spaceship, has lost its shield, therefore the energy source that you were drawing to use the tunneling uh, magnetic beam, you have only the form of propulsion that you have on board. Um, I guess I'll do my best that... to to redirect the station and try to bring it back towards Earth. Roll a D four, as close as possible to its original intended location and orbit. This, this is an interesting question to, to ask. Are, are, are we, we on, on the, the sun side of Earth? Is it day on Earth below us, or is it night on Earth below you're, us? You're, yeah, it's it's currently day. Um, okay. So the Earth is on the... So, the, yeah, the sun is on the other side of the Earth. So we're on the inside um, of the orbit uh, of the Earth around the sun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important right, information I, cause, piece of information, because these are going... We're inside our outer solar system, not going outward. <laughs> Great. I, I have taken this time to warm up my color changing dice. That also, nice. That also means that you're within the um the gravity of uh well of the moon and the like because you're on the other side of the Lagrange point. Right, here, here comes the D four. That's a three. You do realize that now we have the a three? giant Death Star yes. battle station slowly drifting towards Earth. Because we no, it's not. It's it. it's it's staying exactly where it is. So it's in L point. 
Um, you oh. are now you you are now turning the the uh, space station around and heading back towards the Earth. Mission successful. <laughs> However, you still have a population probably of living gargantua on board a half moon sized battle station, crippled and disabled at the Lagrange point between the Earth and the Moon. And I think there is a very good point for us to end our first game of Super Atomic. Well done. Man, that went off the rails so hard, so fast, and never yeah. got and stayed there. I love it. <laughs> so you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I was prepared good. to die, but I'm very glad I, I didn't. Really... <laughs> <laughs> that was fun to listen In into. Retrospect. Holy shit. Hi, hi extraordinary. You guys, are, you guys are so crazy. <laughs> also, I love how we're just totally... Also, hopefully, in all this craziness, nobody seems to... Nobody re takes the time to remember that the definitely not Nazi scientist now definitely has his very own space death ray. That's right. Um, <laughs> I need a little bit of post-game epilogue for one thing, and that's what's going to happen to poor Alfred Fletcher. <laughs> Given that he's on the International yeah, yeah, Space Station, out of order and back in orbit, but with no space suit. Is there one on the space well, the station? The thing is, is that the launch module that came from elon musk's rocket is was still attached with yuri because you didn't kill him um <laughs> so there is a means to get back to the earth with in a sealed good, good. let's just let let's just i mean they did say there was an atmosphere suit. on the space station so you should be okay for now that's if you want to leave uh the um i'm, I'm gonna take yuri necro soon. necrotron on board <laughs> that's on space well, station with on. i mean it, it yeah. can't really do anything without the engines i took from it so. yeah exactly <laughs> True, but like, I mean, Necrotron has a death ray regardless of where you leave him. It's true. Because remember, you don't want to leave a pissed off Necrotron on the death la with the death laser. <laughs> it would be much more beneficial to bring a to bring a very happy Necrotron <laughs> back to Earth <laughs> with remote control of his death laser. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, just like Donald Trump wasn't in um, the the Metropolis when you took out Joe Biden, so he's happy. You know, he's happy with the result. Um, on Huge the success. Everybody says so. <laughs> Unbelievable. We could see it from Earth. Everything <laughs> okay, went so off according to plan. Did we destroy a city? Or did we literally destroy an entire country? You That's destroyed half of the city. Approximately okay, one that... square mile with a five kiloton blast. <laughs> okay, uh, I we... just wanted to make sure... I just wanted to make sure that we had an understanding of the scale of what we had done. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Does anyone, so does anyone have, have any, like... like... Does anyone have no. like any memory altering powers by um, chance? Uh, well, I mean, the I entire know. Earth can see a large black yeah. space in front of the moon. I may have <laughs> dropped half the size of the I mean, moon's surface. I may have dropped it. Anybody outside yeah. saw the the laser shoot Earth, and then they saw the laser shoot an incoming Death Star looking thing. So, oh, actually, no, it's a big black sphere in front of the moon, eclipsing it slightly, uh, with two red glowing eyes on it from the smoldering ruins of the two shots you put through it. So, it's <laughs> glaring so like mean, the devil so, in the sky. I may have yeah. dropped, so, dropped so, a well, fusion power. I box have the space. fairly viable uh, scapegoat we could use. No. Yeah, the German I mean, and the Russian. Yes. I mean, I personally recommend you you activate the um the the space station again and fire a big round arc below the two impact points and make a big smiley face. <laughs> do it. You well, better I believe mean, that that is exactly what Hans is going to do with his third firing of his shiny new toy. I mean, let, 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 let's think about this, guys. Who who among us knows that it was us who didn't do anything when they were targeting Joe Biden? Nobody but us. We are the only ones who know. No, mm. there, there's one. There's Yuri. 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 Uh, no, it's all right, no, we can um, kill Yuri. It's all right, we can just kill Yuri. It's okay, I already <laughs> took his suit Actually, and put him in the airlock. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, technically he wasn't there for it, but then we did just kind of basically say, yeah, we totally let that happen to him, so I, yeah, he knows. I kind of... All right, it's all right. I'm, going back to, I'm going back to general chat before you guys start doing some actual war crimes. <laughs> uh, I figure it's kinder to, to put him in the airlock air while he's We've unconscious. Already... <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, we're well... gonna shove Yuri out into the void of space without his suit. We're gonna give that suit to Alfred. Stop no, 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 no. Oh no! <laughs> as long as no oh. one knows that that we had anything to do with this, we could just blame it on you know, like, oh yeah, totally. They they shot Earth. Fucked up. Mm. Yeah, they shot first. They shot first. We just yeah. shot back. 
Exactly. No human fired on Earth. Hold on, what I forget. System is correct. Are we blaming the? Uh, this is Spanish this is the inaugural uh, the inaugural playtest of um, the alpha version of a Super Atomic. Oh, a resounding cool. success. Yeah, it was pretty good. I would say <laughs> a victory for America. And you did it with. It, it will be Bye. a success when we have a smiley face on that battle station. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the cover Don't of the worry. actual book. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that would be Hans, really good. Actually. Hans Wagner. Yeah, Hans, Wa be... Hans Wagner is got your. Is got, don't worry, Hans has you covered. He'll give you the smiley face. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll do okay. It. I am. I am ending recording. Thank you. All right. All right. <laughs> Cheers.